Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about bias signatures and possibly even technic signatures. The idea behind being able to detect life somewhere out there, outside of planet Earth. But I wanted to start right here, Venus. This is actually what Venus looks like when you remove all of the atmosphere. And as you probably remember from around a year ago, there was a lot of excitement about Venus mostly because of the potential discovery of what's known as phosphine, the somewhat toxic gas that's usually produced by life here on Earth, and that is sometimes also produced in some really extreme conditions on Jupiter and Saturn. Now, whether the phosphine was really detected or not, that's really the question for another video, but the idea of finding these biosignatures on other planets is one of the most exciting topics in what's known as astrobiology, trying to discover something out there living on another planet far, far away. Now, in the past few years, NASA and a lot of other scientists have already proposed a lot of different technosignatures that's for finding extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere out there, and they've also identified a lot of different bias signatures as well. But a study that just came out might have identified another really, really important one, something that a lot of scientists kind of thought about, but never really thought about it in that way. And that's a compound or a molecule known as isoprene, a molecule that sort of looks like this with the general formula being C5H8. And just like methane, isoprene is an extremely abundant organic compound here on the planet. And it's so abundant as a matter of fact that even we produce it all the time. Even as I'm speaking to you right now, I'm breathing out a lot of isoprene in my breath. But there's a big chance that you might have never heard of isoprene, mostly because it's not really a compound that's normally talked about much, even though it is absolutely abundant everywhere. But we've all used stuff made from isoprene, even when we're little. Isoprene is essentially what we refer to as natural rubber. It's that stuff that's produced from the trees in several countries around the world, with the biggest producer I believe being Indonesia, and it's basically that white stuff you see coming out of the tree. Or to be more exact, this is known as latex, and inside of it there's quite a lot of isoprene. But even though this might look like something that we never really experience ourselves, it turns out that isoprene is actually everywhere around us. Every single tree, every single bush, every single plant and a lot of different animals produce isoprene all the time. And what's even more surprising is that as much isoprene is produced by various things on Earth as methane. And just like methane, this is what's known as a secondary metabolite. Or in other words, it's produced as a kind of a leftover from some of the reactions. But most of the isoprene does come from trees. Forests, and specifically deciduous forests, seem to be the biggest producers of this molecule. Now, it's also produced by bacteria, it's also produced by animals, and a lot of other plants, but forests produce the largest amount of isoprene on the surface. Which is really interesting because the majority of the so-called secondary metabolites for animals usually come out as methane, whereas for trees it seems to be isoprene. But since it seems to be produced by a huge amount of different animals, different plants, and a lot of different things on the planet, it sort of uh, makes sense to assume that isoprene might actually have this function somewhere else out there on another planet where life might evolve as well. And because isoprene is just as abundant as methane, it should also be relatively easy to detect it. But there is a small problem, at least with isoprene on planet Earth. Isoprene does not last very long when there's a lot of oxygen around. And so even though a lot of isoprene is released by trees and by a lot of animals, it usually doesn't last very long as soon as it comes into contact with oxygen and it turns into something completely different. But what if we're looking at a planet that doesn't have any oxygen, such as the primordial version of planet Earth? Those planets, if they do have a lot of early life on them, might actually suddenly have a lot of isoprene in the atmosphere as well. And because of this, scientists in this particular study that you can find in the description below Realize that unlike on Earth, where isoprene is broken down into all of this other stuff you see right here, on these other distant planets, especially if they have early, still developing atmosphere, where life might have just started or maybe never evolved photosynthesis to produce oxygen, there might be a lot of isoprene in the atmosphere of those planets. And since, unlike for example phosphine, we don't really know of any inorganic ways of producing isoprene, it means that if we find any molecules present in the atmosphere of these planets, or let's just say we find some molecules present in the atmosphere of Venus, it will definitely mean that life is producing it here and not volcanoes, not some strange chemical reactions. And so I guess in some sense it's great news, we should probably jump onto this and start looking for isoprene on other planets. But it's not that easy mostly because it's still very, very difficult to detect. The scientists in the paper also mentioned that we need at least 10 times more isoprene 
in the atmosphere of a planet we're looking at before we can even identify its signatures using modern telescopes. Now, they do mention that some of the future telescopes like James Webb Telescope or the uh, Nancy Roman Telescope might be able to identify these signatures much easier. But at the moment, we still need to have much stronger signature before we can find anything. At the same time, unfortunately, Isoprene has a very similar signature, and we're talking about spectroscopic signature, to some of the other organic molecules, including methane. And actually, several other hydrocarbon molecules do seem to possess a similar signature to this. With the basic comparison visible right here, the black is isoprene, with the other molecules represented in different colors. And so determining if what we're looking at is isoprene is still a bit of a challenge. But once again, future telescopes, especially the Nancy Grace Roman telescope that's going to become operational in 2025, are going to have enough power to allow us to definitively say what it is that we're looking at. But chances are that one day we might actually find a planet somewhere out there with the load of isoprene in its atmosphere. And what exactly isoprene is going to be doing in that atmosphere, that's of course a question we cannot answer right now. For example, we know that on Earth it does tend to form this somewhat strange, somewhat transparent liquid that does have a tendency to evaporate pretty quickly. But in certain conditions on certain planets, especially if there's no oxygen present in the atmosphere, it might be able to form lakes, it might even be able to form oceans, and might even have similar function to how methane functions on the objects like Titan, creating some sort of an unusual liquid cycle with rain, oceans, rivers, and everything made out of isoprene instead of water. And considering the fact that there's just as much isoprene on the planet as there's methane, as you see in this particular graph from the paper, I really don't think that this is a far-fetched um, assumption. For all we know, maybe even on earlier Earth, isoprene could have formed some sort of a strange liquid on the surface. But in case you were wondering what exactly does it actually do in the trees and why do we have so much of it everywhere, well, that's not really a question that's easy to answer. For example, for trees, it seems to be associated with some sort of a mechanism that prevents abiotic stress. For example, heat stress. With one explanation suggesting that when the temperature becomes really hot, maybe around 40 degrees Celsius, isoprene helps stabilize the membrane inside the leaf cell and thus protects the plant from various heat stresses. And then during nighttime when the temperature is cooler, a lot of this isoprene is then released into the air. But interestingly, even we currently produce isoprene. Approximately 17 milligrams per day of isoprene is released from your breath. Apparently it's the most abundant hydrocarbon inside our breath. And that is very difficult to explain. It's not entirely clear where it's coming from. It could be from our diet, it could be actually from the plants we're eating, but it also could be from the bacteria inside our bellies or from something entirely different we don't currently understand. And so considering that it's so ubiquitous, it seems to be present everywhere, it doesn't really take much to imagine that there should be a planet somewhere else out there that is going to have very similar conditions with a lot of isoprene on the surface produced by various extraterrestrial life. But until we discover isoprene somewhere out there, and until we understand what exactly happens to isoprene inside our own bodies in order for us to produce so much of it, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in the video. Check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.